Hey, Oklahoma, we did it. Thank y'all so much for being here tonight on an awesome, awesome evening. Just four years ago today, we did the impossible. Many of you in this room helped me as a total political outsider emerge from a crowded primary. It was such a hard fought campaign, but we listened to Oklahomans and we traveled the state. We created a plan to jumpstart Oklahoma's turnaround and campaign on a vision to claim our rightful place as a top 10 state. Yeah. <clears throat> and here we are again. The turnaround is working, folks. The needle is moving in the right direction. Thank you so much for believing in this movement. Together, we have ended politics as usual. We have taken a nearly a yearly budget deficit and we've turned it into a $2.5 billion savings account. It's actually the largest. The largest in our state's history, ranked fourth in the country. We made historic investments in education. We raised teacher pay to top in the region. We put more money into rural schools, and we've made government more accountable to the people. We're delivering better services while keeping government small and limited. And our economy right now is booming and thriving. We actually have the lowest unemployment in our state's history right now. And the, <laughs> and the highest labor participation. You know, we cut taxes for every single Oklahoman. We cut regulations for small businesses. And it isn't going to stop there. I could go on and on. But most importantly, we protected Oklahoma's freedoms. And, you know, and people, people all over the country right now, they're waking up and they are seeing and noticing the differences between a red state and a blue state. Never been bigger differences. Friends, let's keep Oklahoma red. We, we all know I have upset powerful special interest groups. Because you know what? I will never back down. I will always stand for what's right, and I'll stand for what's going to put Oklahoma and all four million Oklahomans in the best situation for the next generation. <clears throat> they have a blank check, check. They have a blank checkbook, and they're hiding it in dark money groups uh, that have spent unprecedented amounts of money against me and really against anyone who is part of our movement. In fact, they are bankrolling a candidate against us in the general. This race isn't over. I need us all to stay engaged. We must protect our historic progress and keep this turnaround going. In Joe Biden's party, we have record high inflation, broken supply chains, lockdowns, closed schools, and you know what? I will not let that happen in the great state of Oklahoma. <laughs> unlike, unlike the Democrats, I have a plan to bring real inflation relief to Oklahomans. We're going to pursue tax reforms that lower the income tax and that end the state's grocery tax. We're attracting businesses that will end America's reliance on China. We'll support our energy sector. When Biden is calling on Russian tankers to the East Coast, we will be supplying all our needs here at home and showing America why our nation must reestablish its energy independence. And you know what? Oklahoma companies, we're going to lead the way. <clears throat> In Oklahoma, we're demanding an education system that performs better 
for our students and our future generations of Oklahomans. We will keep pursuing reforms that empower our best and brightest teachers in the classrooms, and we will continue fighting for students to have more choice and for parents to have a voice. <clears throat> Friends, make no mistake, together we are making Oklahoma a top 10 state. We're making Oklahoma a state where our families can live, work, worship, and fulfill their dreams in freedom. Thanks to the people in this room and to all the thousands and thousands of Oklahomans in our 77 counties. Thank you so much for getting me across the finish line. God bless you and God bless the great state of Oklahoma. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we did it. And it is a great evening because this, this is really the culmination of so many volunteers. Uh, so many Oklahomans who have said we are ready for change. And I have to first say uh, my thanks to Connie Johnson, who has been a tremendous leader in this state for many years, and I admire her leadership and her campaign. And as we think about what all of these people here gathered tonight represent, hours and hours of volunteering and the staff, my husband Jerry, my family who's behind me, who have been here every step of the way. Uh, this is a day that I am truly humbled to say I am so proud to be the Democratic nominee for Governor of Oklahoma. <laughs> so we have a lot of work to do. And it is a time where we get back to those Oklahoma values that, you know, Jerry and I raised our kids uh, around, you know, faith and family and hard work and getting things done. Uh, this is a time where we are really excited to see a focus, not on party, um, not on self-dealing like Governor Stitt, not on um, cronyism, but on people, on Oklahoma families and communities, no matter where they live. And it is a time where we will listen to people who are saying, we need to have world-class schools. We need to have access to quality, affordable health care. And we need good jobs. <laughs> what I will pledge to you tonight is that we, I will work my heart out and I will fight like hell for this state and the future of Oklahoma and I need you to help me do that, and we will be a team with momentum, and it is rolling, and it will sustain us all the way to November, and I am ready to get to work. Who's ready? Yeah. 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 Governor Stitt said he would run this state like a business, and by his own standards, that business of Oklahoma is failing. Uh, Oklahoma belongs to you. That's right. And Oklahoma is a state where our kids deserve better, our families deserve more, and our businesses and small business and mid sized businesses should be able to thrive. But we have got to get back to those common sense Oklahoma values of having uh, respect for one another. Uh, where Governor Stitt has been sowing chaos and division, it's time to come together, unite, and focus on real solutions. Oklahoma doesn't belong to one party or one politician. Uh, again, this state belongs to you, and you have a place. You have a place on our team, and I am so excited to have the focus be on moving forward. Uh, it is going to take all of us working together, so we are um, ready to turn the state back to where the people matter and you matter, and it's a, it's a four month sprint to November. And here we go, are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Let's take this energy and let's go, and let's represent all Oklahomans. That's right. Yeah.
I did not see this coming. Even, even 20 minutes ago, I thought we were going to crest this. It's an a incredibly close race. I congratulate my opponent. And, um, and I want to thank you all. We had such an incredible time traveling around the state of Oklahoma and meeting so many good people. And uh, I want to thank the sheriffs. I want to thank the pastors. I want to thank the veterans, uh, the business community. I mean, this, this uh, has been an incredibly uh, powerful time for Lucia and me and for our family. Um, there are two things that I'm glad that I have no regrets for. The first is that, that um, we worked very hard. Many nights we had 20 events. We had 18 or 19 events in 20 evenings. And so um, we have no regrets about whether we could have worked harder. We had a great campaign staff, great consultants. Um, and also, I have no regrets about how I've served in the Attorney General's role. I did not. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, I, we, uh, we have an incredible, we have an incredible staff. You as the state of Oklahoma have an incredible staff at the Attorney General's office and I'm proud to work with every one of them. And uh, in our entire staff, we never hedged one decision in order to be politically more popular. And, uh, and so I'm very, very proud of that. We stood for what we believe and we stood for the rights and freedoms of the Oklahomans. And uh, so, uh, so, uh, so um, I'm honored to continue to serve for a few months, and then there'll be a very smooth transition. And, uh, and thank you for the honor. I want to thank the governor for appointing me and uh, for giving me the opportunity to serve in this way for these months at, a, at a, a very critical time in our state's history. And so uh, thank you to all of our friends and supporters. Thank you to all of you uh, who made a difference. We had 1,600 different donors, almost 1,600 from all 77 counties. And we really uh, are huge believers. We're way more be uh, believing in the, the great people of Oklahoma than when we started just because of everybody we met. So thanks for hanging till the end of the evening. And, uh, and uh, uh, thank you for the opportunity to have served uh, as Attorney General for you. Bless you. I see a lot of excited parents and grandparents around the state of Oklahoma tonight. First of all, I would like to take the uh, moment to introduce you to my family. I've got my wonderful wife, Katie, right here. over here. I've got Violet, Ella, Benjamin, Samuel, my mom, Debbie, Randy Walters, and my mother-in-law, Kathy Goings. And I think we know the governor back here, Governor Kevin Sitt. Tonight, we heard loud and clear Governor Kevin Stitt's top 10 agenda is strong in the state of Oklahoma. We heard Oklahomans say that we are going to be leaders in education. We are going to empower parents with more choice in their students' education. We are, thank you, yes, absolutely. We are going to reject critical race theory or any far left woke ideology in our schools. And we are going to ensure that students are supported with good teachers and more parental involvement so that we can be leaders in education. And I want, I want to say this loud and clear. Joe Biden's America is not going to happen in Oklahoma. Our schools will not be an experiment of the radical woke left. Our schools will carry conservative values and value each individual child. We will never back down to the National Teachers Union and we will continue the fight stronger now than ever. 
thank you all so much for your support, and we will continue to fight with parents across the state of Oklahoma. Thank you very much. You know, we now have a race between the Washington, D.C. establishment and a true Oklahoma conservative. You know, I'm a proven, authentic conservative outsider who hasn't spent one day in, in Washington, D.C. In fact, I got a chance to co-chair the Black Voices for Trump, and I fought alongside the president for an agenda while there were others who ran away from Donald Trump. We need some more Oklahoma common sense in Washington, D.C. Now, I'm not going to Washington, D.C. to make friends. I'm going to make a difference in Washington, D.C. My fellow Oklahomans, this seat belongs to you. It belongs to the next senator because the next senator must serve you. I'm looking forward to debating my opponent on the critical issues facing our country. Voters deserve to see the two candidates side by side on the same stage, and Oklahoma conservatives deserve, deserve to see where each one of us stands. Good evening. This is a little bit of a different race than the last one that we experienced, isn't it? Well, first of all, um, it is a great honor to once again be the Republican nominee for the 5th Congressional District here in Oklahoma. I want to first start out by uh, thanking a few folks. Certainly uh, at the top of that list is my family. I would not be standing before you as a member of Congress if it weren't for uh, my incredible husband and my fabulous daughters who have stood beside me during some very difficult times over the last couple of years as we made the decision to run for Congress. So first and foremost, thank you to my family. I have extended family here, my parents, my aunts and uncles, uh, siblings, and I'm just honored to have them here tonight. So a round of applause for the family if we can. And then certainly, um, I would not be where I am today without an incredible staff, a campaign staff and an official staff that put in the long, hard hours to make sure that I represent all of the constituents of the 5th District so well. So to my staff, who many of are here this evening, thank you from the bottom of my heart for making the sacrifice, for joining Team BICE, for being a part of uh, what has become an incredible organization. I am truly, truly blessed. I want to thank you. I want to start out just to give you a, a couple of tidbits because I think uh, you know it's a it's a great time to be a Republican right now. There's a lot happening, a lot of really good things happening. 2022 is going to be a great year for Republicans. But we must keep up the momentum and send a message. Uh, to Joe Biden that America opposes the far left agenda that is being pushed across this country right now. As you all know, I flipped this seat uh, from Democrat to Republican in 2020. And we, thank you. <laughs> and we must hold this seat and ensure that this district continues to be represented. But also, we need to send a message across the country that Republicans are going to take charge again. We are going to right the ship. You know, I hear from so many of my constituents about the challenges they're facing right now. We have an inflation crisis, we have a border crisis, and we have an energy crisis. And the, the Democrats are not interested in addressing any of those. So it's time for Republicans to take charge, take back the House, and right the ship for the future of this generation and the generations to come. I am honored to be your congresswoman for the 5th District, and it is a great honor tonight to be re-nominated, to continue the fight, to fight for our conservative values. But the fight's not over tonight. This fight will go to November, and I need everyone's support as we move to the general election uh, this fall. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the support. And let's take back the House. Yeah.